So the PC behind me right here is still having quite a few issues with the blue screen of death. If you've been following me for a while on this channel, you know that this has kind of been an ongoing saga where the PC is just forever plagued with the blue screen of death on Windows. It just, I cannot get rid of it despite rebuilding the system over and over again, switching just about every component out, we still blue screen. I have found a couple of times, like I rebuilt the system and for maybe a couple weeks, the blue screens will kind of calm down for a bit, but given enough time, the blue screens came back. So this time around, I think I've actually figured out why this new system is blue screening again. Because before I was on Ryzen, I had an AMD 3950X inside of the MSI X570 godlike motherboard. And even then we were blue screening. So we ended up building an entirely new system. We have a new liquid cooler, new RAM, a new M.2 SSD, a new motherboard, a new CPU. And still, even in this whole new rig, we blue screen. So recently I've ended up running some memory testing software on this PC and uh, turns out the memory that we have in there now, the DDR5 stuff, it's faulty. And um, that is the reason why, at least I think, that is the reason why we're currently blue screening every single day, multiple times a day, at the most random times. Oh, this is, this just made a massive mess. Okay, I didn't know packaging like this existed. The floor is now um, a bit of a disaster. Right, so the RAM that we had in there before was from OCPC and this one was a total of 16 gigabytes, so eight gigabytes per one of these sticks and it was running at 4800 megahertz with a cast latency of also 40. So yeah, this is the old RAM. Unfortunately, it is actually defective. Something, I think probably only one of the sticks, I don't know which one is messed up, but yeah, no longer gonna be using this RAM. And here is the new RAM from Kingston, the Kingston Fury Beast. This is the RGB version with an LED light strip on the top right there. It even says Fury, if my camera can focus on that. This is of course 5600 megahertz, but also with a cast latency of 40. So not only are we gaining capacity switching to this set, which is 32 gigabytes per stick with a total of 64 when we have two sticks, incredible. And we'll still have two slots left. So in the future, if for whatever reason, I have a need to go to 128 gigabytes of RAM and use a total of four of these, I could have that option, but 64 gigs, I feel like will be plenty. So let's just install the RAM, just like that. They are installed. It's a pretty simple job. <laughs> now, prior to switching to this set of RAM, which is 64 gigabytes, as I said a second ago, I was using 16 to edit videos on Premiere. 4K videos at 60 FPS. It was a struggle. Um, <laughs> Adobe Premiere, the moment it would start up, would max out all the RAM, and uh, countless times Adobe would give me an error message saying, Hey, well, all memory, save your project before something goes bad. And then more often than not, something did go bad and it blew. Okay, so the system has booted up just fine for the first time using this RAM. It is still running on the DDR5 profile from the previous RAM. So we are currently at a speed of 4,400 megahertz. All the RAM has been detected. As you can see, we have 64 gigabytes of RAM right there. Everything is showing up as expected, apart from the speed. So we are gonna have to crank that up and fingers crossed, it actually runs at the rated speed of 5600. But if it doesn't, I really won't be too disappointed. I'm mainly just very happy that one, the RAM has 64 gigabytes in total now. Very good for video editing and everything else, you know, the Google Chrome tabs. Right, so we are in the BIOS and as you can see, 64 gigabytes of RAM have been detected. This is the motherboard we're on, that's the CPU and we have 32 gigabytes of the Kingston RAM at the moment running at 4400 megahertz, which we're gonna fix right now. So head over to the overclocking tweaker if you're also using an ASRock motherboard, but most motherboards are gonna be pretty similar. We're gonna head to DRAM configuration, and then over here we have three profiles that we can select. So the slowest one is profile number three, and the fastest is profile number one. 
I'm gonna go straight for profile number one and just see if this is stable on my system configuration. I'm gonna press uh, save changes and exit. We're gonna get into Windows. Maybe, maybe so. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We're in Windows. As you can see by the speed rating right there, we have indeed successfully been able to run at 5,600 megahertz at the full 64 gigs. Very nice. This is honestly like such an important upgrade for the system. Like how ridiculous would it be to build a PC or like an RTX 3090 at 12900K and have 16 gigs of RAM while you're trying to edit videos is just, that is not a combo you want to go through, trust me. Before I was legit micromanaging like how I was using the RAM. So while editing video, I'd have to close all the Google Chrome tabs and sometimes even like raise a synapse. I'd, I would turn off IQ. I would turn off as many things as I could just to minimize RAM usage so that Adobe Premiere could have as much RAM as it possibly could, given that I only had 16 gigs. Like at the moment, there is nothing running apart from just like my startup apps. And we are currently using around eight gigabytes of RAM just idle. <laughs> so, so just imagine what happens when we turn on Google Chrome, we turn on Adobe Premiere, and now I've just turned on a pretty big project on Adobe Premiere. And uh, just, j just have a look at the RAM usage climb up. So we are currently at 32 gigabytes used, 34, 36, 39, 40, 43 gigs of RAM used, 46, 48, 51, and now it's gonna probably drop back down a little bit. But yeah, we just hit over 50 gigabytes of RAM used just by turning this project on. Although that was so much faster, loading all of this stuff in. Already I can see such an enormous improvement in system performance, just opening up Adobe Premiere. If you yourself are a video editor and you're currently using like 32 gigs of RAM or even 16, and you're editing big projects on Adobe Premiere, Keep an eye on Task Manager and how much RAM it's currently using because upgrading from 16 to 64 just sped up how long it takes me to load this project, maybe like three times faster. It's the next day and I've gone ahead and edited the entirety of the video that you just watched on this PC using the new 64 kit, 64 gigabyte kit of RAM from Kingston and nothing has gone wrong. The PC hasn't blue screened a single time. I managed to export a, another video on Adobe Premiere with no problems. So far, editing this video that you're watching now, zero issues as well. While the system is on, it actually feels noticeably snappier, probably because the RAM is running at the correct speed this time, because the previous kit was actually rated for 4,800 megahertz but it was only capable of running at 4,400 and it was still faulty. So with this one, it's running at its full rated speed, zero issues. And I have some software opened up on my screen right here, which is actually how you control the RGB lighting on this RAM. I've got the Fury RAM software opened up on my screen right now. The program is called Fury Control or Fury CTRL which I'll leave linked down below in the description to where you can download this if you have a pair of Kingston Fury RGB RAM as well and you want to control the RGB lights. I have found that this RAM, at least so far from my testing, is not compatible with the G-Skill Trident Z software that I typically use to control RAM from not only just G-Skill, but the previous kit of RAM I had was not from G-Skill, but it was still compatible with the G-Skill Trident Z software. So if you have RAM from some other manufacturer and you want some software to control it with, I would say give the G-Skill Trident Z software a go and see if it's compatible with your RAM, because it might be. But in this case, with the Kingston Fury Beast RGB RAM, it does not seem to be compatible. But as for the RAM software, there's quite a few lighting effects to choose from. For some reason, I can't quite choose the other ones like Teleport, Flame, Voltage, Countdown, and Rhythm. I don't know why, but yeah, they're just grayed out for some reason. Maybe you need full four sticks of RAM to, to use them, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we have the dynamic lighting effect, we have the breathing one, there's a firework lighting effect, 
which looks kind of like that. If you can even see, oh yeah, I think you can actually see the RAM. This is the Rain one, quite a fan of the Rain, especially when you pair it with the Lee and Lee cables doing a very similar effect. There is a lighting effect called light speed, which looks a little something like this. There's of course static lighting effects. We got a wind lighting effect, which looks something like this. The RAM kind of like stays on partially. There's slide, which looks like that. Then we got spectrum. Yeah, then there's prism, which is kind of similar, but the RAM seems to be going in like that sort of motion with the color changes. And then there's rainbow, which I think is fairly self-explanatory. I'm gonna go back down to the rain effect. I think it looks pretty cool. So this is the rain lighting effect, but with less speed. And if we max it out, yeah, it's noticeably faster, but even at the slowest speed, I would still say that the lighting effects still look rather smooth, which you can't always say about all the RAM manufacturers out there. Sometimes when you lower the speed of a lighting effect, it looks laggy. But in this case, these actually look quite okay. But apart from that, that's kind of most of the things in the software covered. If we press this button right here where it says DDR5, in, in this case, uh, we have slot one and three, which shows the temperature of the RAM, the XMP profiles as well. But apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a bit of software to control lighting effects on the RAM. We have a toggle for startup when Windows starts up right here. And uh, while this software is on, one thing I would like to keep an eye on is the actual CPU usage of the Fury Control software. So, okay, 0.2% is pretty much nothing. Uh, how about if we disable the software and turn it off completely? It, I don't think it's running anymore and it seems to have saved the lighting effect. Cool. Does that mean I could disable this software from starting up in the future? And will it remember the lighting effect that it was on previously? Or will it instantly go back to the rainbow wave effect that it, that it was on by default? And if I wanna enable this rain one again, I'm gonna have to open the software up or have it always as a startup application. Let's restart the PC and see if the RAM remembers what setting to be on in terms of RGB lighting. Okay, the PC has started up again. And uh, yeah, the software, let me just check, is not running and the RAM has still remembered the lighting effect it was on last time. Big shout out to Kingston as well as Box.co.uk for sponsoring today's video and sending out the RAM to resolve the blue screens of death on this PC. So far, I feel like it's actually fixed the problem. Fingers crossed, it stays this way, running smooth, no blue screens. Hopefully this is actually a functioning PC once again with no weird issues and faulty parts anymore. If you are interested in picking up some new RAM or any parts for your own PC build, please check out box.co.uk. They actually have a ton of stuff on their actual website. It's kind of like an Amazon, but for technology. If there is some sort of discount code that we've managed to set up, it's gonna be in the video description down below. But if there isn't, well, there isn't. But yeah, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.